Welcome back everybody, this is Brother Mutant here. Today we're doing a viewer requested build. Uh, uh, this is for Gaidex. This is for you, buddy. This is one of a couple videos that I'll do for you. Uh, this is because there's too many options to actually make the type of character that you wanted. You're looking for an arcane trickster. I have you one. Uh, the question is, is, are you going to like it? Well, let me show you what we have first. So I have pre bathed the character. This video will be long. I uh, haven't yet to be able to trim it down to an hour and a half, so I'm trying to get it to under an hour for you. But let's actually fast forward through a lot of stuff for 10 minutes to talk about how you level it up from 1 to 20, and then I'll spend the next probably 45 minutes telling you why it's awesome and why I'm also going to change it. Now, our character is Vivi over Who's here. She is a vivisectionist dip. Now, you didn't specify how to get sneak attack, so you could do vivisectionist is one, or a rogue level one. Both have pros, both have cons. This is the vivisectionist because I like it better. Doesn't mean it's for you. That's why the next video is going to be a rogue dip. And again, show you the pros and cons of it, as well as a different class to get uh, arcane spell casting. So instead of wizard, I'm going to go either sword saint or some sort of magus of some kind. Won't be as many spells as far as the level seven, eight, nine stuff, but it'll be solid, solid protection. And again, it has more tanky feel to it to me anyway. But this is still a solid contender for soloing the game. You have to go wizard or some intelligence-based caster, in my opinion, specifically because you're going to need the extra skills to make sure that you can do everything you need to solo. Now, you're not going to cover everything. As you can see, I've unlocked everything. That's clearly a waste. You don't need a point in use magic device. You don't need a point in lore nature or lore religion. Those are kind of wasteful. I just put them there just, again, because I always like to unlock things if at all possible. And then I go from there. I maximize the things that you needed for sure, so persuasion's at a 20 Knowledge is at 20, and this is Gangbuster 20, by the way. You got gear on. We'll talk about that here in a moment. Uh, but notice that we also have a uh, bonus 20 for Knowledge World, because, again, int intelligence-based skill, I figure why not be good at that, too. Notice that your perception is 20, uh, as well as the bonuses that you get, as well as penalties from some of the gear. Again, we'll talk about gear later. Stealth is not 20, uh, and the reason it is not 20 is because... Uh, 20 skill ranks invested in, I mean. The reason it's not 20 is because... We're going to have gear that supplements that, and again, once you cast a Vanish, Invis, or Greater Invis, you get another 20 added to this stealth. So stealth of 40 is going to be pretty solid for you, I think. And again, there's ways to make it a tiny bit higher than that. Trickery isn't 20 ranks in it. We put 11 in there, and again, you can see you're doing fine with a solid plus 30 right now. And again, there's ways to make it better or worse. We'll talk about that later. I put a point in Athletics. This one I don't mind investing a point in. And again, the reason for this is, is you're not a strength-based character. Even with the gear you have on you right now, you're still not going to be someone that's going to be uber uh, athletic. So early chapter one, you can do some checks if you put a point in there at least. After that, though, I wouldn't invest more in it. If you wanted to take the three from these three here and put it in athletics, I wouldn't complain. Honestly, you may say, oh, I'll just put in mobility because mobility only got four. But you're a dex-based character, and we're going to push that dex even higher. So again, this is actually going to be better than you think. And trust me, once I cast another spell on you, it's going to be even better than this by leaps and bounds. So I'm not worried about mobility. Not my point. Uh, to make this character, a vivid section is one dip to get the sneak attack die. Uh, three levels of wizard. Let me show it to you this way. Three levels of wizard. So at level four, you'll be done with wizard for the time being. By level four, you have to have four points in mobility, trickery, and knowledge arcana. That's why you, the earliest you can make arcane trickster is level five. We can do that. And again, the secret is to make sure you have two sneak attack die. One came from here. The other one come from Accomplished Sneak Attacker, which we picked up at level one. Why don't you see that here? Because again, you're an elf, not a human. There's a reason for that. I'll get into that in a moment. But the elf only gets one skill uh, feat at level one. As such, I wanted two. You want weapon finesse, I assume. So that's the first. Your second is the Accomplished Sneak Attacker. To get that, you just need to take a penalty. We took Spell Vulnerability and Abjuration. This is a staple. So that allowed us to get two feats at level one for the price of a penalty. So Weapon Finesse, Accomplished Sneak Attacker, all here at level one. Now, I did make a mistake. I should point this out to you. Uh, when I did the level up process, I was in a hurry, because I've done this video multiple times. Uh, we have six different traits that you're going to have in this build, three each time. So at the level one, you get two, or a third if you get uh, a penalty. We've taken the penalty. It's Envy. Uh, it's a penalty for comp, uh, concentration checks, which is a problem for you, but as long as you have enough cash on hand, it never shows up. So it'll be there maybe the first few levels, you know, level two, three, or four. But when you start stockpiling some cash, you will never see this again. And that's awesome. The other one's a similar type of penalty, but it's a physique one, and it's called Hedonistic. 
It's a penalty to strength and dex though, and that's a bad one to have early levels. Once you finally get to the level you get in this, you should have thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars at hand at any given time. It should not be a problem. Again, don't don't ever go poor, but by and large, you were never going to do that anyway. But this allows you to get six traits total. When I did the traits, this is my mistake. I picked combat trait and I did berserker. You don't berserk. I wanted blade of the society. I clicked the wrong one. I just fat fingered it and just wasn't paying attention. So we're down a sneak attack die, by the way. But that sneak attack die is beautiful because not only does that give you a sneak attack die, it doesn't count towards your need for Arcade Trickster to have two die to purchase this, but it does count for sneak attack for your weapons and as well as your touch attacks, and that's race spells and melee touch attacks, by the way. And I'm assuming crossbows and, and bow and arrows and all that fun shit. So again, you have an extra sneak attack die. Know that I just messed up. And better than that, when you get sneak attack die with that trait... Instead of getting, let's say you had uh, 8 sneak attack die, which is what you would have. 8d6 of damage, right? 8d6 plus 8 because of that trait. It also gives you another point one, uh, sorry, 1 point per sneak attack die as well. And that also stacks with uh, Sense Vitals, an amazing spell you cast on you that can give you another 5 sneak attack die at best case scenario. So you could have 13d6 plus 13 damage per attack. Now, you don't get many attacks. This is the downside of this build. Your bab sucks at a plus 9. That's even worse than a purist wizard that goes 20 levels because they get a plus 10 by the end of the build. It's because we're dipping all over the place, and that's part of the problem. But I figured that's why I maxed out your decks, so you have that chance to hit. It's also why I went to weapon fighting and improved to weapon fighting, so you get an extra 2 attacks on the offhand. And again, yes, it's a penalty minus 2 to the swing, but since you're using light weapons, that minus 2 is not as bad as it could be. It could have been a minus 4, and I think that's okay. But again, back to our traits. Uh, you had picked up, uh, after Envy, of course, at level 1, Family Heirloom trait, which I love, because not only does it give you a magic weapon, in this case I'm going daggers. You could have gone uh, size, you could have gone daggers, short sword, uh, I think punching dagger might even be in there. Uh, but by and large, you want to keep it to a light weapon, and uh, kukris are in there, you want to keep it to a light weapon, and that when you have skill in, which you didn't have many skills here, which is a problem. That's why I didn't go Psy. I will on the next build because it's going to be a sword saint and they can pick size as their chosen weapon. Get it for free, which is awesome. So for that case, it'll be different. But it's the same general principle. A light weapon that you can two weapon wield so you get extra attacks around. And the daggers are nice because there's two different types of daggers out there that have a speed buff to it that are the name dagger category. So that's going to be awesome for you as well. This is also a bonus, as you can see over here, to your swing for every type of dagger as long as it's quote-unquote, an actual dagger, not a punching dagger, not a star knife, just a dagger. You get a plus one to the swing from this point forward. So at level one on up, you already got basically the equivalent of weapon-focused dagger. It's not the same, but it stacks with it. And you see I actually grab your weapon-focused dagger as well. I figured, why not? You're going to be a dagger wielder. Might as well wield them well. So that came much later in the build, though. But that's an awesome upgrade for you. And again, a cold iron dagger plus one right at the start of the game is a nice boon to you. With weapon finesse, your dexterity started off as a 19, Strength was 12, Con was 10, Intelligence was 18, Wisdom was 12, and your Charisma was sadly a 7. We floored Charisma so I can get 12 to Wisdom and 12 to Strength. That's why I did that. Up to you, but I think that was a solid choice. Now, we also picked Noble Family Lebeda for the campaign trait. This gives you more Knowledge Arcane, which is nice, but also gives you a, a reusable ability um, at least one additional time a day. I went with the Wizard one, the extra bonded item. So wizards, if you don't take a familiar, you can resummon a spell. It's called Bonded Item. This gives you two uses a day now, instead of one. Now, it won't show up until you pick a Bonded Item, which is at level two. But it will be there waiting for you. So that basically allows you to resummon a spell twice a day now. One through nine. So again, upper level spells, really, really potent that for you. Extremely nice. There's other choices here. I could have given you another Mutagen, which a Vivisectionist gets. So another reason we like Vivisectionist. I could have given you extra impromptu sneak attack. Only one more a day. It's alright, but I'd rather have the extra spell. You get a lot more with that spell than you can get with just, uh, I can sneak attack once more a day. I'd rather just get another greater invisibility so I can literally sneak attack for the next 19 rounds. You see what I'm saying? So again, on you. And again, this will be different because we're not going wizard on the next build. So a bonded item would be useless, but I have a better trick for that one. And again, I'll show you that in the next video. So that's cool here. And again, we already talked about my mistake there. Now for the other three, after Hedonistic is picked up, you're going to pick up the social trait Adopted, 
Everwary Tiefling has been my new favorite for people that are going dex based and don't want to get flat footed. This is at least half of your dex modifier, which as you can see is actually pretty potent right now and can still get better from here. You're still considered flat footed, so if sneak attack is applicable, you will be sneak attacked. But you know, you'd have a higher dexterity than no dexterity at all. So I like this one. If that's not your thing, the other option for me for this one would have been in the adopted category. There's another one for like elves that are like a plus two to your initiative. Again, less likely that you're caught flat-footed if you're higher on the initiative totem pole, right? But up to you. Uh, the other ones here were meta magic upgrades, regional trait, and magic trait. Getting a meta magic master, magical lineage. Pick two spells, level one through three, level one through nine, that you want to add a meta magic to, and then you doesn't penalize it as much. I went with Meta Magic Intensify as well as Meta Magic Extend. Your choice, of course, for what you grab, but I grabbed those two. You get those free as a wizard. You get two that you can pick from. So I picked those two. Why? Because I like doing extra damage, and Snowball's an amazing spell. Having it at level one, doing 10d6 of damage, plus all your sneak attack die, is an awesome spell, and no spell resistance for this spell. So if something is you know dodging your fireballs or just immune to your lightning bolt because he has magic resistance that you're not penetrating, Hit him with a fucking snowball spell in the face. As long as he's not immune to cold and you hit, of course, he will take damage. Now, the question will be, can you crit or sneak attack with that? Yes, in most cases you can. Some guys are still immune, but 10d6 of damage is still 10d6 of damage. I think we can all agree. That's a solid smack to the face. And again, for the other upgraded one, you can pick whatever you want. I like keeping it to the lower spells because I'm used to that as a Magus build. But Dragon's Breath is still a solid choice in my opinion. Four different damage types... And again, having it intensified instead of doing 12d6 of damage, best case scenario for you will be 17d6 of damage. That's a big oof for fire, electric, cold, or acid at your discretion. And I thought that was pretty cool. But again, you can pick whatever you think makes the most sense for these two. Uh, the big reason we wanted to go Arcane Trickster, I assume, is to get the, the Capstone ability at level 10, the Surprise Spells. That means any spell that you do uh, that does damage, like say a Fireball is a staple, uh, if the targets are flat-footed, you can do sneak attack damage with that fireball spell. That's baller. That's an amazing amount of damage for you, and again, can be buffed with things like Sense Vitals. So again, instead of the 8d6 plus 8, it could be 13d6 plus 13 extra fire damage, and then the 10d6 of fire damage on top of that from the actual spell itself, or electric, or acid, or whatever spell we're talking about. So that's still pretty damn cool. Then... Uh, we went, because we had to go wizard, you wanted to pick just generic wizard and pick a school to focus on. I went with illusion for a reason. You have to pick two counter schools. My choices were abjuration and divination. You do not have to do this. You can do abjuration and transmutation or uh, divination transmutation. I'd keep it to one of those three. The downside is for transmutations, there's some really good spells that you're going to miss out on. You can cast any of these spells. It just costs more spell slots to cast them, right? But... Think of the spells that for transmutation that you're really going to love. Reduce person, extra dex, uh, extra armor, extra attack bonus, all kinds of buffs for being a teeny tiny person. That's a transmutation spell. Haste, another transmutation spell. Another attack around, more dodge, more uh, ground speed. Again, more reflexes, amazing spell buff. Transmutation spell. Slow, a but debuff to the bad guys, another transmutation spell. Web, another transmutation spell. You're getting the point. And then, the, of course, the best in my opinion, a level 6 spell called Transformation. That's the one that turns you into a goddamn fighter, level 20 by the end of your build, which means you'll get not only two more attacks around in your main hand, your bab goes up to a solid plus 20. So if you're whiffing, 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 activate that spell. You can't cast spells after it, so buff up ahead of time. Activate Transformation and choppy, choppy, man. You'll be shredding stuff left and right. We're talking seven attacks in a combat round, best case scenario for you. That's a solid upgrade, just saying. Up to you, though. I went Illusion for my main school, because, again, most of your buffs, especially like Greater Invis, fall under that category. So a free spell a day that's an invisible or an Illusion spell is a solid upgrade for you. We have Blur. We have Invisible. We have Displacement. We have Mirror Image. We have Greater Invis. And then all the attack spells from the Illusion schools as well. And as a wizard, you have not only Shadow Evocation, you have Greater Shadow Evocation, something I normally don't have access to. And that's awesome to have those as a free spells because there's multiple spells in one. You get to pick and choose what you do. Then you also get this crappy little Blinding Ray at level 1 wizard, which was level 2 for you. 
it does blind a target. It's a raised spell, so you have a to hit check, but your dex is good. You should have a no problem hitting a target. From there, though, they're blinded. If they have more HD than you in wizard levels, and we're only going to get wizard level 9, um, they're not blinded, but they're dazzled for a number of rounds equal to one, uh, one round per wizard level, so maximum of nine rounds. That's still beneficial for you. It's like a penalty to their swing. Blinded is better, obviously. It only lasts one round. Normally, I'd say use this on a team or with pets out, for instance, but it's a solid chance for you to blind a target. They have a 50% chance then to straight up miss you because they're blind. It's just like saying you have greater invis on, but only for that target. Then in your next combat round, he's still technically blind. So you have a chance until his turn to attack him and get sneak attack damage because, again, he cannot see the attack coming. He is flat-footed. That's cool. I thought that was interesting. And you get a number of uses a day, which is nice. But this is the real reason you want invisibility or illusionist. Invisibility field, a toggle that you can activate that makes you greater invised for a number of rounds equal to your wizard level. So nine by the end of the build. It's the exact same effect as this one here, Invisible Thief, for Arcane Trickster. But again, it's a toggle. And again, it's based on your Arcane Trickster level. So you'll get 10 levels or 10 rounds a day of that. So totally, you get 19 rounds of being invisible at a moment's notice. That's pretty cool, I thought. And again, I thought that was worth pursuing. Now again, yes, you have your impromptu sneak attacks. And while we could have taken, instead of an extra arcane bond, I could have grabbed you an extra impromptu sneak attack. I didn't think that was that interesting. And you don't really get these until much later. Uh, remember, this is uh, level 1, 2, 3 arcane trickster. That's after level four, so it'd be five, six, it'd be level seven would be the first one. And then by the time, or sorry, the first one. By then, uh, you'd have literally been in through quite a bit of chapter one, uh, uh, sorry, past chapter one and into probably chapter two, more likely than not. And again, having two impromptu sneak attacks is not as cool to me as having an extra spell a day, because I can do a lot with that extra spell a day, just saying. But up to you. Uh, from here... Uh, remember, you're going Arcane Trickster all the way, so from level 5 to 14, and then you're going to go the 15 through 20 will be the last levels of your wizard. Okay, So you will get one of these meta magic early, and then you'll get one of them very late. That's why I grabbed the extended later. You could grab this early if you know, you're know you more about the buffage. Grab extend earlier than later. It's just, I know me, I like damage with my spells. So I like having the intensified earlier. You can't even really use this when you get it at level 2. But you'll build into it. It won't show up as being useful until level 7. But I'd rather have it at level 7 all the way up than having it, this would be at, what's see, is this uh, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 7, 6, 5, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. You wouldn't be able to get the other one until level 16. And that straight up sucks. So, again, on you. But I thought this was a nice combo. Now, let's talk about, uh, let's say we talked about skills already. I mean, you're putting in everything. We talked about uh, your feats. Aha. Uh, so we had a weapon focus, or sorry, weapon finesse, uh, and uh, accomplish sneak attack at level one. Level three, you're grabbing arcane strike, piranha strike, two weapon fighting, toughness. And this one can be whatever you want. I just like the extra hit points because your hit points was kind of suck until you got some con uh, constitution based gear because you had a con of 10, buddy. But that's nice, and that's like another 20 HP. That's a solid upgrade, in my opinion. Uh, there's double slice, and this does work with agile weapons. So if you have two agile daggers, let's say, which I do, uh, that I can equip, that dexterity bonus you get, you get that plus 12 damage extra to both of those guys instead of your plus 5 lean-ass strength stat here. That's a solid, solid upgrade to your damage output. But only if it's an agile weapon, because we did not take fencing grace or slashing grace. Again, judgment call. Uh, we had additional traits. Again, that's how you got the other three traits, as well as your hedonistic penalty. Uh, and then I grabbed you improved two-weapon fighting, improved critical dagger, and weapon focused dagger, because I figured, what the hell, you're going to be a dagger guy when I'd be really good at being a dagger guy. Nothing wrong with that. Notice your bab sucks, but your dex kind of compensates for that, so that's really to your benefit. Otherwise, it's going to be really, really hard for you to hit things, and I think that this is a solid choice for you. So that's the build. Now, of course, let's talk about gear. I've tricked you out in a supplementary gear uh, accoutrements. You will have whatever you want. Obviously, I'm not getting you the best hat. The plus eight to intelligence, wisdom, and charisma would be baller. You may not be able to get that early. I'm sure you can, but maybe you don't want to. Maybe you want to progress the game like normal. 
that hat don't show up then until like the end of the damn chapters. So this is a solid upgrade. Bonus to DC checks of all your wisdom uh, or illusion spells. Plus two DC bonus. And a little bonus to wisdom besides. Now it's going to be useless uh, if we put on the robes that I normally would have. That would be the, uh, let's go by name. Envy of the Master. This one doesn't have as much intelligence though. It's a six, but it's a four for wisdom. And it's a four for armor. That's so I don't have to wear the bracers of armor class plus eight, which obviously you want, but you don't have to. Why would I want something different? Because I could put on. Uh, where is it at? It's under the G's. Yes. Right there. Golden Vision. It's only a plus one, but it's a plus one to your illusion spells again, your specialty, so to speak. Plus two to your saves against illusion spell. And that's the other reason I like this one. And again, I lose out on armor. I get four back wearing these robes. It's not amazing. It's not eight. But it's a solid uh, upgrade to your armor. You don't have to worry about mage armor or casting anything else on you that's armor related. So again, it's something. And again, it's not the best of the best. But Dark Master robes are reasonably easy to get. So if you wanted that one, plus eight to intelligence and charisma, not wisdom. So... This is your only way of getting extra wisdom on this current layout. So again, your wisdom is low. It's even being penalized by a ring that you're wearing. And again, your wills are not stellar, which they probably should have been. So that's the thing. Be careful. Notice that you have uh, Absolver's Cloak, Deflection Bonus, plus four, Resistance Bonus to all your saves, plus four, Enhancement to your Persuasion Skill check, which is awesome because your Charisma straight up is garbage still with a plus three, and that's only with a plus eight bonus. That's not anything. That's really, really bad. So having another plus four to any kind of check like that is extremely beneficial. And you get more armor if you're fighting evil targets, which, again, is another bonus. Ring of Circumstances. Amazing ring. Make sure to activate it. I'm always ready. And the ones I would activate are armor, dexterity for extra swing and armor, and damage if you're using your agile weapons. Better reflexes as well. And then I would use intelligence for more spells a day and higher DC checks on my spells, and as well as bonus to my intelligence-based skills. Same with the dexterity, bonus to your dex-based skills. Then I would get a bonus to all the DC checks of all my spells. So that's multiple bonuses to armor, multiple bonuses to the DC checks of your spells, just from that one ring alone. Then I went Ring of Reckless Courage. Now this is the one that you have crafted for you. It is a bonus to charisma, which again is wasted because of your Dark Master's robes now but it's still a solid upgrade until you get those robes. Bonus to stealth and trickery, two stats that you cared about. Notice that it's a competence bonus because they don't stack with other competence boni. Plus four to your chance to confirm a crit, which is awesome because the more attacks you have, yes, you're getting sneak attack love, but who doesn't love critting as well? That's awesome. Then a bonus, this is the best part, plus two to the DC check of all your mind-affecting spells. And while that's mostly illusion and enchantments, there's some others that fall in that category, a couple necromancy spells and like one weirdly divination spell, which is awesome. And again, bonuses that you will appreciate as a wizard type caster. Notice the penalties. Penalty to wisdom, that sucks. Penalty to perception also sucks, especially since wisdom bonus, uh, bumps perception and will saves. And there's a penalty to will saves too. So you're getting screwed on all your wisdom based stuff by wearing this, hence the reckless courage. Money of these things that he forms and crafts for you usually suck in one way or the other. And here's your worst part. If you ever get critted, you become confused. But having said that, that just means for one to four rounds, you lose control of your character. That doesn't mean your character is helpless. They will either stand there, they will attack the nearest target, and if you're going solo, that's the bad guy still, which again, you just can't control him, but you at least will attack. You will hurt yourself, which that sucks, or you'll hurt your team, which doesn't exist. So best two out of three. I mean, you're really not having that many penalties here if you really do get confused. And being crit definitely sucks, but it's not going to be an ender to your game, in my opinion. And I have spells that can make you immune to being critted. So I'm just saying. Again, here's Golden Vision. They're plus one, like we said. Over here, to be good, you have to get good to get the Absolver's Cloak. And to get Maya's Charm. Notice this is a plus two bonus to Illusion and enchantment spells. That's amazing for you. Yes, it's a penalty to strength, and that sucks. But I did not go power attack in your build. I went piranha strike. And again, thank you for catching that mistake. I didn't do it this time on purpose. Why? Because unless you don't, uh, you have something to buff your uh, strength, you will not be able to get power attack. 
and I do not like relying on gear most times to get feats like that. You can do it, I'm not stopping you from doing it. But remember, power attack is just as good as piranha strike when it comes to daggers. And you're not wielding anything two-handed ever, ever, ever in this build. You're a dex-based build. To me, by and large, you're going to be swinging with daggers, period. So power attack won't do you any good. And if you somehow forget to equip that strength-based gear and your strength is a 12 or a 10, power attack shuts off. So why do that to yourself? I went Piranha Strike for this build specifically for that. But I do appreciate you catching that mistake on the Dueling Sword build that I had posted earlier. Notice uh, Dark Master's Rope, like I said, versus, again, your... Um, there you go. Envy of the Master. And I did those specifically. It's not the only robes that you can wear, but it's because of the intelligence bonus, because we're not getting it from your kick-ass hat. If you have the hat of Mental Perfection plus 8, 8, and 8, I highly recommend you put it on, and then you don't have to wear these crappy-ass robes. You can get something else better over here. Up to you what you grab, but there's a lot of different robes out there. Get something with armor, or at least keep mage armor, potions or scrolls or wands available. They last for an hour a pop. It's not like something you're going to like burn through a ton of them. So I wouldn't worry about it. And you can even cast Mage Armor as a wizard, so you're fine, really. So just work around it, is my point. Notice for a belt, again, I could have given you the belt of Strength, Dex, and Con plus 8, but I like alternatives. So here's one of the alternatives I come up with. Devil's Sash. Plus 8 to Dex, plus 8 to Con, and Immunity to Poison. Well, then my Strength sucks. Yes, but then you have something here that you can do to buff your Strength. Star Soldier's Gauntlet. Plus 8 to Strength and the effect of a Scorching Ray for free, which means at will, you can cast this at every combat round, three beams, and you can get sneak attack damage off this shit. So you really become a beam caster like crazy with just these gloves on. That's amazing. And with your high, high dexterity, you're solid for being able to sneak attack with that shit and definitely hitting the mark. If you don't like those gloves or you know, have a hard time putting together the pieces that form those gloves, uh, I recommend other ones like... Where's my list? Uh, H. Where are you at, Mr. Hammer? Right here. Hammer's Fist. And the reason I like this one is it's a plus four to strength. That sucks compared to the plus eight. But look at the next step. Plus two morale bonus to armor class. That's here, here, and here. So it stacks with everything, which is beautiful because I don't know of anything else that gives a morale bonus to AC. So that's to your benefit, right? Don't like that one? There's another one called Ultimate Grip. Plus six to strength, not eight, but still move it in the right direction, and a plus four to con. Why would that be important? We already have a plus eight. Well, that's if you have this belt. Maybe you have the Sash of Slash. That's the one that's a dex bonus, like plus six, and that's all it gives you, plus some resistances to physical attacks. Maybe that's your thing. Maybe that's the first belt you found, and you need some extra con. Put these bad boys on. That's awesome, and a free spell a day, Death Clutch. If you ever uh, watched uh, Indiana Jones when he was a kid like I did, you know, Mala Ram, that little bastard that would clutch your, at your chest and yank out your heart and set it on fire, that's basically what Death Clutch is. Freaking amazing spell, a necromancy spell, once a day use. Pretty awesome. And again, just pointing out that you have options. You will be a clothes whore. You will have like this, a massive kit of rings and belts and glubbies and booties and scrolls and wands and potions, oh my. Everything that you can swap out, you should definitely have extras so get your bags of holding so you can carry all this extra loot but the one thing I never swap out is a thing that has an intelligence bonus unless I'm putting something on that's better or um, it's in the same slot right so let's say again I've been swapping out the uh, dark master's robes for the envy of the master that's a penalty to my decks but at least I still are intelligence but at least I have intelligence plus six why is this important? Because if you look at your spells, you're missing a spell slot now, like all over the damn place, because you went from a plus eight to a plus six. You see what you just did? You've deleted one of your spells. So again, you'd have to go back through and put those back in. But I would not do that until you got the best one back on again, the plus eight. And again, you don't have any armor now, but again, with something as simple as bag of tricks, Wand of Mage Armor, which you can get at Old Legs at like chapter one, right? Get that little bad boy. Uh, 
Where's that in here? Uh, just hold this right like that. Use it. And now you have Mage Armor on you for one hour. And you can do that 50 times uh, before this wand burns out. Cheap ass wand. You'll have 50 different fights before you ever have to worry about Mage Armor again. So again, solid, solid choices is my point. Um, from there though, like I said, make sure you have the right gloves on, the right gear on. Decide which one you want. Is strength more important? Get those Star Soldier ones as soon as possible. It takes a lot, a lot, a lot of pieces to put that shit together though. That's why when I find something else that works, I use those for the time being. There's not other uh, gloves in there. you got plenty of other ones you can choose from too. Lightest Touch is another one I highly recommend. Why? It is a bonus to Dexterity plus 6. So what? We have a Dexterity Belt. Yeah, if you found a Dex Belt, sure. And it's 6 versus the 8, so the 8's better. But look what else the gloves do for you. They have a built-in at-will spell, Reduce Person which is the one that shrinks down in size and makes you a teeny tiny person like these little girls that are with you here. So again, you could literally use that at will. I have actually made sure I had it available to me so that I could just do this anyway. But you don't have to, is my point. You're saving on spell slots. Now, yes, the gloves only last, the casting only lasts for, um, I think, uh, five minutes at a time. But again, you keep them in your pack. You can use them as many times as you want. They don't have uses per day or anything like that. It's an at-will effect, which is amazing for you. Now, before we get into here, uh, let's actually be smart about some stuff. Uh, we haven't um, made sure we had all the spells that we wanted. And again, I don't have to get crazy with this stuff here. But again, I do like my intensified snowballs for 10d6 of damage plus sneak attack damage. Uh, I do like throwing a Molten or why not? Uh, and a... What? I got every spell for you, by the way. Um, let's grab an acid arrow for the range, because that's always fun to sneak attack that. Uh, over here, we got... Always like a lightning bolt spell. Uh, let's get us a little bit of that um, dragon's breath. We have not meta magic that yet, so make sure you meta magic this, intensified it, see how it's still level 4 for you? That's because of that trait that I picked up. So you should see at level 4, at the back end, Dragon's Breath is available for you to literally go boop, and now that's 17d6 of damage of acid or fire or cold or electric. Then, uh, let's go over here and grab ourselves. We got paralysis spells. We got more paralysis spells. Remember, sneak attack is easy when they're basically immobilized like that. So again, paralysis spells are awesome. Some are enchantments. Uh, some are evocations. We have conjurations. We have um, conjurations, by the way, are here. Where are you at there, Chain Lightning? Change of Light. That's a Conjuration one. Notice that this one has no spell resistance and it's a reflex save versus back here where we had uh, one that's a will save and uh, is affected by spell resistance and it's an enchantment versus a Conjuration. This one is an enchantment versus a Conjuration and it's a will save. So again, we have uh, categories. Another reflex save, it's an evocation spell and does cold damage. So again, differences. That's why I like some of these things. Now, we can get into the higher ones. I'm not going to get crazy here. But notice some of the reasons that I have a problem with divination, abjuration, and transmutation being one of the, or two of those three you have to pick, in my opinion, to be your schools that you hate. The downside is, is there's some really good spells here. See the red ones? These are the ones that take two spell slots to cast at once. So why did I go with the two that I did? Abjuration spells are nice, and you want them for protection. But double casting it like this, while it sucks... At least get it for a long period of time. Most of the abjuration spells of merit are like one minute per caster level, ten minutes per caster level, an hour per caster level. So again, I didn't feel bad double slotting some of those. Uh, divination spells, you know, true strike, seeing viz, uh, true seeing, those suck because again, it'd be nice to have those and not have to double slot it. True strike, though, you can get for free on your vivisectionist side of things, and. Uh, since Vitals is missing because of Divination, so again, you'd have to two-slot that, and that sucks, but again, it, maybe you don't need it because you already have eight die of sneak attack. Do you really need 13? You know, the short answer is, of course, yes, but you don't have to is my point. And again, I don't mind making that sacrifice. I almost always forget that I even have the ability to cast Sense Vitals on my tunes because, again, I'm usually busy with just combat, and it, again, it doesn't last very long, so that kind of sucks. So if you did double-slot this, let's say I did it like here, and double slotted that, I would actually 
not do that here, what I would do is I would meta magic that shit and extend it. Yes, it's a higher level, level three, but again, if I had room, I'd do like that so that at least it lasts, even though it's taking two slots, it's lasting for double the duration at least. So again, on you how you actually do that stuff. But again, I'm not going to go over everything, but there is a couple really good spells that I wanted to make sure that we had on a Sea Mantles one, uh, Fiery Body, a Transmutation spell is another, uh, Foresight sadly is a Divination spell, which we did double slot because this one is a Maze Balls. This one, when you finally get it at level 18, you're going to love it. Long duration buff, so at least that's got that going for it. Makes you immune to flat footed, bro. A solid, solid upgrade. And a bonus to your armor class and reflexes besides. There's very few things in the game that give you insight bonus. There is stuff that do. There's a necklace that gives you like a plus five or plus six to your insight bonus to armor class, which is awesome. So that's better than this, but it doesn't make you immune to flat footed. So I prefer using the spell when I have access to it, which I almost never do because I never play a wizard. Fiery body though, on the other hand, not only does it make you immune to fire like you would expect, you actually heal from fire damage. You're immune to a shit ton of stuff, including crits, uh, blindness, disease, poison, stuns, acid resistance 30. You take more damage from cold, but you're a wizard. You can make yourself damn near immune to cold with spells. So don't worry about that. Just make sure you use those spells to buff up. Again, sadly, those are abjuration spells. Bonus to your decks, but it's an enhancement. So by now, you probably got that plus six or plus eight gear anyway. Your fists do extra fire damage, and again, you get like basically improved on arm strike, so you can punch him in the face now. But eh, the cool part to me is this part too. All your fire spells, because you can cast spells in this form, get a plus one to the DC check. So again, bonus, 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 and more bonuses besides. You will enjoy some of the spells that you get. Uh, a quick last note: notice some of the better spells you have, illusion-wise as well. Uh, fear effect, mind affecting, anything that buffs those things are money for you. Uh, notice Whale of the Banshee, a necromancy spell, a lot of the ones that have death effect as well. And that's going to be important when we talk about your daggers. But before we do that, a quick reminder <coughs> about why you went Alchemist. Not only do you get these four slots, which I would probably do like this, or maybe like that. Again, for quick skirmishes, use the, the cheap shields instead of the, the very expensive wizard one that you have over here, right? That costs two spell slots. Yes, this lasts for 19 minutes. But the other one lasts for a minute, and I'd rather use this up when I get jumped on the road and then save the 19-minute buffer when I get to the actual dungeon, right? So that's cool. Notice I actually grabbed every spell that you had available. You would not scribe these. This would be dumb for you to actually put these in here because you have no access to any of these spells. I did it so you could see them. Notice the ones that are unique to here that are not on the wizard list, like your cure spells, about your uh, aid, bark skin, Delay Poison, Lesser Resto, uh, we've got more than that, we have, again, another Cure Spell, uh, Communal Delay Poison, Remove Disease, Remove Blindness, all these ones, the reason I point this out to you is, remember, at the level 1 dip of Alchemist, the Vesectionist like you are, you can cast all those spells from Scrolls or Wands and there is no Use Magic Device check, because you have training in the field, even if it's one level, and that's freaking awesome. So all those spells, especially stuff like Heal, amazing spell, Legendary Proportions, I think is unique to you too. So again, not something that a wizard would have access to. Find the wand or scroll of that shit and don't scribe it, cast it. Use it when you need it. And again, an amazing heals for you. Because remember, if you're going solo, it's really nice to be able to do that stuff. And while you have, as a wizard, Overland Flight and Fly, you don't have Air Walk. And notice how this one lasts for long periods of time. So again, solid, solid upgrade. Death Ward, a solid upgrade for you. And again, Freedom of Movement, solid. You get the point. That's why I like the Alchemist, the Vivisectionist dip instead of the Rogue dip. That's one of the main reasons for me. Now, quickly, I want to just rest up your character so you have all your spells back. So just do instant rest like that. In due time. But, go over here. You got your Togs on. Here's your Mutagen. Dexterity based Mutagen. 16 bonus on your dex, bro. That's for 10 minutes a day. And notice that not only do you get extra armor because of the dex, but you also get extra armor because of the natural armor mutagen, which stacks with the boots that you're wearing, the Manticore boots. So again, solid, solid choices. Did I actually go over that? Oh, I forgot to mention the boots. Manticore skin boots is my staple. Again, you have multiple choices, but I like the extra armor and the extra movement speed. 
also for your belt, hand of the Magistan, rod of the fearless, rod of power source, rod of undeath, and rod of flaming vengeance. This one will actually be taken on and off you as needed because all your spells that do damage will be fire damage now. Still worth having, but if you've got a guy that's immune to fire damage, just do that in combat. Literally take it off and then put it back on later. It's totally fine. Um, you can totally do that in combat. Not a big deal. But you normally want this on you. Bonus to your evocation spells. Bonus to all your spell levels. Bonus to your um, necromancy spells, DC check. Bonus to your conjuration spell, DC check. Um, uh, high resistance against fear effects. The ability to cast any scroll and one out of four times they'll make a copy of that scroll so you don't burn through your scrolls so much so again stack up 99 cure spells on your damn person they're lighter than potions and you can use all of the ones that are again on your wizard list or your vivisectionist list this saves you a ton of money very very useful for you last thing to talk about before we actually go into battle daggers i've paired you up with a bunch of different sets it's not the only daggers in the game but this is the only daggers i really care about except for one dagger which gets an honorable mention. It is not a named dagger. It's called Brilliant Energy Dagger Plus 3. Uh, no, sorry. Keen, Brilliant Energy Keen Dagger Plus 3. So it's a plus 3 weapon. It has the keen feature, which we don't need because we have improved critical anyway on daggers. But it's nice to have it for free. And it's a Brilliant Energy weapon, which means that it cuts right through their armor and their shield bonuses. So it's basically like a touch attack weapon attack for you. It's an amazing dagger. You'll definitely like it. Keep it on your person somewhere. But these pairs are for various roles that you may encounter. Here's your turtle up daggers for extra protection. You got arcane protector, lightning duelist, plus three and plus one to your dodge respectively. That's four extra armor right there. This one makes you immune to nausea. This one here gets a, a bonus to your initiative rolls and does electric damage. Now granted, they're only plus one daggers, so that sucks. But you have a spell called wizard greater magic weapon as a wizard you can use this your caster level is kind of low at 19 so you may not get the plus five you should get at least a plus four now what does that mean for whatever weapon you have it will not add five to it the best enhancement bonus will be five or in, in many cases for you four what does that mean so if i cast that spell right now this dagger will become an enhancement dagger plus one like it is and then it'll say temporary enhancement plus three the total is plus four. That's to your benefit. So when you have a weak dagger between the two sets, put the weak one in your main hand, in my opinion. Then use that spell to buff it up to get it to a plus four, or maybe if you're lucky, a plus five status. That's a solid upgrade for your swing and your damage potential, okay? But these ones, again, are for protection. These ones here, mithril, so a silver weapon. Uh, it's a plus four, so a good chance to hit. It is a speed weapon, doesn't stack with haste. And it doesn't stack with another speed weapon. So if you've had a speed dagger and a speed dagger, you will not get an extra attack on both of them. Whichever one you equip first is the one that gets the plus attack. Know that. Okay, so I took another speed dagger, for example, this one, and put it in my offhand on this category. So again, I went from three to two to two to three. You still have five attacks around. But this one here penalizes the will score, uh, uh, will saves of a target uh, for one minute, minus three penalty. Doesn't say. Uh, has a chance of or anything like that it means if you hit them their will saves went down three points and i don't think it stacks i think it literally just resets the clock to one minute that's still fine remember those illusion spells those enchantment spells some of those necromancy spells hell that one kick-ass divination spell are mind affecting spells which means will saves probably for all those guys this is a boon for you to land your attacks look at the one uh with edict the name of the dagger compared with dark wind another plus four dagger Bonus to stealth, now it's probably a competence bonus, which means it won't stack with the plus four you're getting from here. But this is the best one, it's the plus five, so it's a slightly more stealth, just a little. And the best part, it gives you another sneak attack die, and it says with any weapon. What does that mean? It means if I'm two weapon fighting, both of these get a plus one d6 sneak attack bonus. And it gets even better than that, the plus one d6 sneak attack bonus actually adds to your ray spells and your touch attacks as well. So it's basically just another sneak attack die. So long as it's in your little fisties, another plus one d6. That's awesome. Then, if you don't like that, maybe you want to do damage, because sneak attack ain't doing it for you. Here's your two agile daggers, named agile daggers, excuse me. Deceiver and Troublemaker. 
and they almost sound like they should go together, don't they? This is a really nice combo that I've been finding, is they seem to have synergy based on the names. Deceiver is a nice plus three. This one's a plus two. Notice, thanks to your um, feat that we picked, the double slice or whatever the hell it's called, that allows you to use your strength modifier for both of weapons evenly. It works for dexterity, too, if they're agile weapons. How do I know this? See your plus 30? See your plus 29? Why are they only off by one point? Because this one's a plus 3, this one's a plus 2. That's how you know it's working. That's all damage. That's not sneak attack, baby. That's you hitting them. That's a solid, solid 1-2, one, 1-2 two, one, two punch. So if they're immune to sneak attack, these would be the daggers I'd probably switch over to. Solid choices. Notice this one also has displacement once a day. I could care less. It's free. I'll use it. Probably forget that I even have it. But... Notice that it also has a luck bonus or stealth. That's not competence bonus. And yet, even more, it has a higher reach. So if you want to reach over the shoulder of, say, an undead horde that you summoned that are tanking the troll, let's say, and then you're reaching over the shoulder and stabbing the troll in the face, you have a reach of seven feet, not two. It's like you have a long spear in your hands. That's freaking awesome. The threat range that you uh, have now for when people try to move past you, let's say, is even larger so therefore you get those attack of opportunities as they're trying to run away because you have a really large reach that's awesome then for this guy you have not only an agile weapon it's also on fire and it's destructive that's the times three modifier when it does crit which is epic and again we know we have a bonus to your crit chances you know, plus four chance to confirm those crits so more likely it will happen that's awesome we have the improved critical for all daggers so again 17 to 20 that's a solid 20% chance to crit on every hit, in my opinion. And that's, a, well, not necessarily 20, but on the first initial strike. But that's a solid choice. And then, uh, for whatever reason, it's anarchic, which means you do more damage against lawful targets, which is, yeah, I'll take it. And again, there is lawful evil demons, or devils, excuse me, in this game. As such, that will work on those. So extra damage is extra damage. And it's, I'll still can sneak attack with these, by the way, just because I use it when... Their immune to sneak attack doesn't mean you don't want these in your hands any other time. Still a solid, solid upgrade. But I like the extra attack, or in this case, the extra attack. See, I know we're on this side, that's not my offhand weapon now. Look at these ones. Dormition, Frailty. Again, they sound like they go together, right? Dormition, massive plus 5 weapon. Undead Bane, which means it's plus 7 against undead, and does 2d6 of extra damage against all undead, plus the 1d6 extra damage to all targets, thanks to the positive bonus you're seeing up above. And it gives you a bonus to death effect spells. Remember I told you you had a lot of death effect spells, necromancy-wise, and even uh, a couple that weren't? This is to your benefit. A massive bonus to the DC check for those guys. Uh, and then um, you get a bonus to your saves against those same death effect type spells. Then this one here is a speed weapon, so an extra attack around. And while it's only a plus one, and yes, it has that lame bestow curse, you know, curse of weakness once a day, yeah, I'll use it. But... Uh, the best part is it's a ghost touch dagger. What does that mean? If they are an undead, probably, uh, they literally could be incorporeal, which means physical damage is non-existent for a normal weapon. Well, you have magic ones. For magic weapons, it's half damage, unless it's coming from a ghost touch weapon. So this one's going to do full damage against those ghost inspectors and whatnot, and while this one may not do full damage, it does extra damage because it's an undead pain weapon. So again, when you fight undead bastards, you switch to this set. You see what you just did there? Massive nice combos here that work out beautifully and it's nothing more than just daggers. So let's actually get into it and kill some shit. Uh, I buffed up a little, but not a lot. Let's uh, use our cheapy cheap oh, shield yeah. spell know, from know. our uh, 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 vivisectionist pool. See the two minute buff? It's actually giving me for two minutes. Did I use, oh, I use my meta magic rod. Maximize though. That should have nothing to do with why it's two minutes. Why is that? Oh, wow, that's awesome. Ah, sorry. I'm trying to figure out why your, your shield spell is two minutes long instead of one minute. See this rod? See how it says increases the caster level of all your spells by one? Apparently, that applies to your vivis section of spells too. So, your shield spell, which is normally one minute per caster level, and your caster level one. Technically speaking, your caster level two now for vivisectionists, which is funny to me. I don't know. I just stumbled upon that. I thought that was hilarious. Anyway, here we go. So here we got some bad dudes. Ends here. Notice it's the surprise round, but just because it's a surprise round doesn't mean you're guaranteed sneak attack. And these guys, it happens to be, are uh, 
part barbarian if you like to scan them. I think it should tell us. Uh, these guys are going to have um, rage and all this other shit, which means that they're definitely going to be half and half something and something else. And barbarians are immune to sneak attack thanks to some of the benefits that they get uh, defense-wise. So some of these guys are going to be straight immune to your sneak attack, and that sucks, but that doesn't mean you can't have some fun. So you see how this doofus is here? Remember our ray spell? I'm going to move this down into here, like so. Now, remember our ray spell, that at-will spell? That's how far you can shoot it. I'm going to rotate my camera. So we're just a little ways away from this doofus. I'm going to actually backpedal out of here and make them come to me. Um, these guys are going to delay their turn to the very end for a reason. I don't like it flashing back and forth and back and forth between my team. So if I delay them all to the end, once they're all together, I'll just cancel, cancel, cancel their turn. See that? One, two, three, four, five. Now back to me. Okay. Now, it's a regular combat round. Let's say you want to hit somebody for some sneak attack. So I got Troll Guard Berserker, Troll Guard Veteran. He's a fighter. You see that? Mm -hmm. Fighter humanoid, whereas this doofus is a barbarian again, so he may be immune to your sneak attack. That would suck. So, we want to hit this doofus because we know it should work. And probably that guy back there as well. So, how do we do that? Well, let's zip on up into here. And if I just shoot him, it'll be regular damage. Yeah, we weren't invisible, we hadn't set anything up. But. Trolled me with his goddamn what you call it. Cheap bastard. Stop hitting me. Hate you guys. Alright. In turn, I gotta break out of that effect. I should have buffed up like mind uh, blank, which would have protected me or gave me a better save against that kind of thing. But this is our chance to use something cool. So here's our ability to go invisible. Literally, nothing more than a toggle, knows it uses a swift action. And now I can sneak attack. So I'll go back to these guys and let's say I want to just straight up stab their ass. You should have run. Sneak attack. Sneak attack. Sneak attack. One more. Yeah. And that's your sneak attack die. 76. Should have been 86 plus 8. But I picked the wrong thing. And again, if you cast sense vitals on yourself, best case scenario, you would have had another 5d6 to that. So that could have been 13d6 plus 13. Now I have had it glitch on me where that plus 13 went away. And the sad part of that is, uh, because of the sense vitals, but the sad part of that is when that glitch happened to me, when it went back to the normal weapon swing, it was just like this, where I didn't get a 76 plus 7 anymore. The plus extra fell off. I don't know if it was a glitch, maybe I didn't pick the feed again, I wasn't paying attention, quite frankly. But if that happens to you, maybe never use sense vitals. Go to an earlier save where you haven't messed that up, but check it first to prove to yourself that it's working as intended. Notice uh, that toggle is going to keep on running until I shut it off, or it runs out, and I have a 50% chance to be missed, and it's because of that toggle, because it's just like I have greater reason. Exactly what it does. Uh, if I want to uh, get out of here, a common spell for me to have is Dimension Door, where I literally say, screw this shit, I need to be somewhere else. Like that. Remember, you still have a swift action. Well, we can't cast spells like this anymore, brother. Maybe we got screwed. Well, that's not true. Remember this rod I told you to keep? Rod of the Fearless? It is a lesser quickened meta magic rod. And the best part of this little number is this. Ray spells uh, can be quickened. So can your cantrip ray spells. So I'm invisible, right? So flat-footed is still applicable here. If I use a cantrip, and it'll be on fire because I have... This rod it doesn't have to be on for it to be on fire. This one here, though, is going to quicken and use that swift action, and I should get a sneak attack attack in this combat round. Boom! Shut it back off. Didn't even use the charge because it was a cantrip. I love this trick. This is how you can do two different cantrips in the same combat round against two different targets that are farther away from each other and still get sneak attack and sneak attack. Very cool, in my opinion. Now, having said that... Let's uh, throw out, uh, here, you can cast skeletons. I want to have pets to distract these guys for a moment, because you can do the same thing, and you should highly do so. 
Come on, guys. Pokey ass bastards. Good lord, that's a lot of skeletons. Doop, 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 and doop. Alright. Now, I wanted to do something different. Let's see who's susceptible to sneak attack, because some are immune and some are not. We have our invisibility aura on. They have no choice but to be um, sneak attack if you can hit them with a sneak attack spell. Use something like Burning Arc. Something that'll bounce through multiple targets, and every target hits will do fire damage, and every target that takes damage will take sneak attack damage if applicable. See how you got two that got sneak attack and one that didn't? The one that didn't was the one that's technically a barbarian and therefore immune to sneak attack. So these two did though, the veteran and the veteran, because they're the fighters. And again, if you look at the damage, 76 was applicable. If they can get that higher, it goes higher. Again, if I switch to those daggers, that one that gives me extra sneak attack die, this would go to 8d6. If I pick the right trait, this would be 9d6 then with that dagger. Again, with the uh, sense vitals on, that could be 14d6. Again, extra, extra damage. You will appreciate that once you get the Arcane Trickster level 10. And turn. Skeletons. But like I said, I think you'll like this build. You may like the other ones better. And why do I say that? Because the other ones have armor and will have better protection going for them, whether it's Sword Saint or if they're wearing armor like the Eldritch Archer. And you may not think an Eldritch Archer would be fun to play as a Arcane Trickster. He's in the you can get some really good composite on those, add that strength damage to your hits, right? And you got a nice dexterity besides. You don't have to be a vivisectionist, but you can. And again, you could go rogue as or or rogue. Uh, but the vivisectionist one is extremely fun to me. And I do like the fact that you already have skill in bows because you are an elf. So composite short bows and long bows are your bread and butter. You can pick that as an heirloom too. So you have to pick composite long bow. Not long bow, composite long bow, and it matters. And you get another plus one to your swing for all longbow attacks, which again is super funny to me. So again, you have a lot of options going for you if you don't go the traditional way. That's what the other video or two that I'm going to make for you is all about. But again, we have... Oh, these guys. Get off my damn character. Come on now. I want to show you a couple of other things. There you go. Know that you have your impromptu sneak attacks when you run out of these guys. You can hit them with anything like a weapon attack for one combat round and it's guaranteed that they're flat footed so it's similar to this not protection wise but it's still similar and you may say well why would I use this if they're not going to get sneak attack because that's a thing it's still flat footed which means if you're having a hard time hitting your mark having this toggle on this one here will give you a bonus to your chance to hit because there's basically ignoring their um, dexterity bonus and dodge bonuses they all go in the toilet and again, if it's a, God forbid, if it's this is on and you're using like a ray spell on them, they've got basically an armor of 10. I mean, there's not much that's going to get through uh, that protects them. I mean, you can, you know, roll a natural to, uh, one and straight up screw it and do a big failure. But other than that, you should hit with a ray spell or a melee touch attack. So again, amazing little doodad here. You don't get many uses a day. And yes, an extra one is possible, but five is still about as bad as having four a day. It's fun. And you will use them half the damn time I forget I have them. I'd rather use my invisibility spells on myself or these damn auras on myself. Again, another way to set up targets over blind. Conjuration spell, thanks to our beautiful rod that we have over here. You have a bonus to your conjuration spell DC check. And you can hit it with, say, glitter dust. Like so. Everyone that failed except for that one that had a little save that you saw, they have little twinkly twinklings on their head. They're effectively blind, which means except for this one doofus that's over here that's a problem for me, everyone else can't see me, so I have, I'm basically invisible to these dudes. Don't waste your aura. That's awesome for you, right? And again, you will capitalize on stuff like this. Now, I know I'm taking damage because I'm not going to pay attention and I'm not buffing the creature up, but I just wanted to show you that this character is extremely tough, extremely durable. Hell, the armor that you're actually swinging with here is a solid armor class. Yes, there's builds out there that have a 60 or a 70. Yes, there's builds out there that will have even a 60 when you're fighting with touch attacks. But you're not doing a monk dip, otherwise you're diluting out your spells again, and you, I assume, wanted level 9 wizard spells. This is what I gave you, bro. Go to the next video, though. The next video will have uh, the Sword Saint... 
I'll probably do Rogue Sword Saint just to show you what that one looks like first. And then I may even do another one, like I said, with a Vivisectionist Eldritch Archer, just to give you a different sense of things. And I kind of dig that one, like I said, because if you're using summons, get like a, a Animate Dead spell or a, a, you know, Summon Monster Wand, where you just summon some pets before battle every time, let them take the beating. You're standing behind them and just peppering the bad guys while invisible with arrows. And every arrow that hits gets sneak attack damage. Wait, then you got rapid shot, so you get an extra arrow around. Then you get a speed bow for an extra arrow around, or cast haste on yourself for an extra arrow around. Then you get many shot, which again is a hit, so it should get sneak attack, I think. And then there's a bow out there, a, long, a composite longbow called mirror bow, which every shot that lands, the, it shoots another arrow into them, which is another to hit check, which means another sneak attack. It does less damage, but the sneak attack doesn't. And you're just like shooting like four freaking arrows at a time and doing like eight sneak attacks worth of damage each time. It's amazing what you can do with an Eldritch Archer build. I'm just saying. Wait for the other videos. You'll see what I'm talking about and decide from there. But this is a solid one to get started with. If this is what you like, run with it. But my name is Brother Mute. Please like, subscribe, comment down below. Tell me what you think of the video, man. And uh, see you soon. Bye now.